What is the crack guys? It's Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern and Kern School of Combat. So if you've only guessed from the video title, um, this video is all about the Kern and what exactly the Kern is. So before I get into that, I want to kind of run over a few things. So first off, a little bit about why I set up this channel. So the two main reasons why I set up the channel were to promote Irish martial culture and what exactly that is and also Irish martial arts and these very unique parts of our Irish heritage that really don't get the recognition or the attention that I really feel they deserve. Irish history is very interesting and um, it's huge, huge and um, broad topic. I mean, if you look at something like Stonehenge, which is or Stonehenge, Newgrange, it's a incredible site that is older itself than the pyramids. And that's not something that many people would know, but there are so many things within Irish heritage and Irish history that are like that, that to me, I think, is not really recognized or promoted near as much as it should. So why do I refer to that when I talk about the Kern? So the Kern or the Cairn is kind of a, well, the Kern, the word Kern itself is an anglicization of the word Cairn or Cairn, which is the Irish word. And for those who don't know, Yes, Ireland has its own language, Gaelic or Gaelica, which is an ancient, ancient language. It's changed like many other languages over the past thousand and more, even more so in the past hundred or so years. But the current itself was kind of a catch-all term for Irish soldiers or Irish warriors. And it has become a kind of catch-all term for the Irish warrior essentially from the kind of 1200 to 1600 period and I really feel that the current and the Irish soldier across that time period has been really ignored within history. Like I said earlier there's a lot of really important and significant events in Irish history that get a lot of attention and I feel that this period really doesn't and there's so many unique and important aspects to that period of Irish history that I think really should be dived into more. So, as I said, the two main reasons for this channel were to promote Irish martial heritage and martial culture, but also as a kind of unique project for myself. And this is where the current comes in. And this is why the channel has the name that it does. It's not just me rambling about them, but it will also include some pretty interesting projects over the next few years. And these are hugely inspired by Tom Langhorn, aka Fan Davy Dozy. Um, I will put a link to his channel below um, and I really want to thank him for the help that he's given me over the past um, year or so. We've only kind of been in contact online but I really do appreciate the little um, bits of help that he's given me and I also really appreciate the channel because it's really given me the push to do um, what I'm doing now. So a little bit about me and why I'm doing this. So, the Kern is, as I said, a very unique part of Irish history and something that I've done for oof, over half my life now, so probably 16-ish years, maybe even more, is reenactment. Um, I have been a reenactor for, as I say, half my life. And over that time, I have gotten to do some really fantastic things. Um, the group that I'm with, Fingal Living History Society, FLHS, um, has been incredible um, and I've really gotten to experience some amazing things and I'm going to put some uh, pictures of some of those events on young baby faced uh, Nathan from many many years ago and that's going to give me a very unique insight into history now yes there's what we call reenactorisms there's certain things that won't be 100% accurate mainly due to access to materials or not having all of the up-to-date information but any good reenactor will know that things change as time goes as is the way with history our understanding kind of learns and develops but the thing that happens with reenactment which is kind of not so much something that you'll experience with the academic side of history is that you actually get to go out and wear the outfits wear the clothing test out the weaponry and see if those things work and I've always really had that in mind. Um, anyone who's trained with me uh, with martial arts will understand that I'm very much a 
practical person and I like to test out and make sure that those things work. So circling back to the Kern and again the name and the name of the channel, the Rambling Kern. So what I plan on doing over the next few years is various different hikes and various different adventures around Ireland in um, Kern equipment and with Kern clothing. Through enactment I have gained a pretty good understanding of um, being outdoors, wearing medieval Irish clothing and using medieval Irish equipment and general bushcrafting and you know those sort of interesting aspects of Irish history. And the Kern is something that I think really does not get the attention it deserves. Now the Kern itself is a, or the Kern, um, is a kind of, as I said, it's a catch-all term. And the Irish Kern that became popularised in literature and in culture of the time is usually a much later thing. So what do I mean by that? The Kern was a, as I say, a general Irish term for soldier, but by the 1500s it was a very specific term for a type of soldier within Ireland. Now this had started by the 1200s um, or the 13th century due to the Gallic glass. So Irish um, martial culture was a very interesting thing prior to the Viking invasion. It was a very uh, ritualized form of combat and you can see this in the Tain, um, or the Tain Bokulna. Really recommend anyone who hasn't read that book. It's a fascinating insight into um, Irish history and uh, Irish mythology. Really, really recommend looking at it. So, after the Viking invasion, Irish martial culture really changed. So the Irish began to adopt different weaponry, different tactics, um, how they um, conducted warfare really drastically changed. And over the course of the next few hundred years, it will continue to change. After the Norman invasion, um, things changed even more. And then into the 1200s, with the arrival of the Gallic Glass and the Irish Shores, things changed even more. So Irish soldiers at the time were very kind of unique in how they fought. And that's something that I've kind of mentioned on this channel previously, that the one thing that really dictates how a soldier fights and how they conduct warfare is the environment that they're in. We can see that in any period of history. So the Vietnam War, I think, is a, a really classic example of that. The Vietnamese fought in the jungle, they fought using booby traps, they fought in a very unique way that wouldn't work in the deserts of Afghanistan, for example. You know, that was the same in Ireland. We had a very 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 heavily forested country basically a, a temperate rainforest at the time almost impenetrable is how it was described in many of the uh, literature account or literary accounts uh, from the time which is not at all the ireland that we're used to today which also makes some of my future projects a bit more interesting because the landscape in ireland is not what it was um, so to kind of recreate some of the events and also to Kind of test out how things were done at the time it's kind of uh, going to be an interesting little project so definitely something to stay tuned for so after the 1200s there is a series of very interesting um, events that happen in ireland various different um, invasions and the term kern starts to become popularized and irish mercenaries start to become a important part of not just warfare in England but also warfare in mainland Europe and that's where things start to get quite interesting because the term Kern starts to pop up in literature outside of Ireland. Now one of the difficult things with researching any period of Irish history is that our records are patchy at best and um, we do have some really fantastic records for certain parts of Irish history but in other aspects we don't. All sorts of reasons for this. Um, as I mentioned, there have been numerous invasions of the country, but also during our War of Independence and our Civil War, many records were destroyed, as is the unfortunate thing that happens during war. Now, as the years start to pass, the Kern becomes a very recognised 
section of Irish society. And also the clothing, the dress, the customs become very unique and very quintessentially Irish. The equipment that the Kern uses all become very unique and really becomes a unique aspect of Irish society and Irish culture. So that's something I want to show you on screen now. So I really do hope you enjoy. So like all good things, we'll start at the beginning. And this is one of the earliest images of an Irish warrior. And there's a few really interesting things to note here. So obviously his equipment is quite interesting with the very small, almost buckler-like shield that he's carrying, as well as the uh, spear. So the spear remains consistent throughout Irish culture. Even in the Tain, you'll see references to Irish people using the spear. And for centuries after this, the spear remained a predominant weapon on the battlefield, obviously changing and varying in lengths, but remaining uh, hugely popular. The two really interesting things, in my opinion, to note are the haircut and the fact that the gentleman is barefoot. So the haircut is something that's referred to as a glib, and this is something that you see um, in Irish artwork for centuries after this. It's a haircut that remained very popular, and in later centuries became the kind of renowned Irish hairstyle, so to speak. Now the other thing is the fact that he's barefoot. So this is something that's very common in Irish artwork. And you might think to yourself, obviously Ireland's a very cold climate. Um, so why is he barefoot? Now with the bogs throughout Ireland, as I said, terrain often dictates warfare. And this is a very good example of that. Very often warriors are depicted barefoot because with that boggy terrain, shoes would rot away um, and cause all sorts of issues with your feet. So it's very important to be able to be agile and also to be able to dry off your feet quickly as you needed to. So this is something you do see very commonly and you'll see in uh, upcoming pictures. So next up we have an image of Dermot McMurrachita or Dermot McMurrah. So this man is very famous or should I say infamous within Irish history. He is the man who brought about the Norman invasion of Ireland. Now there's a few really interesting things with this image. Obviously the axe is a very interesting thing. Now by this point post Viking invasion um, Irish weaponry and warfare had really changed and this is something that's happens throughout Irish history. The Irish are very quick to adopt new warfare and new tactics and the axe is um, very much a symbol of that. The Irish were not known for using them at all in warfare and by the time the Norman invasion rolls around they have become almost synonymous with the Irish uh, warrior and you see a very unique set of axes um, being developed within Ireland and um, you can see some here from the Irish National Museum um, very interesting selection of axes that are uh, seen both in Ireland and in Scotland but some of these are almost unique to Ireland themselves and very uh, unique and interesting um, depictions of that. Now going back to the image of Dermot McMurrah the interesting thing here is there's not a huge amount of imagery in the early medieval period or I should say the Viking period as such um, maybe that's due to all the raids on uh, the country and on the monasteries who knows but uh, this image of uh, Dermot is a very interesting one for, uh, to actually see how Irish dress and Irish warfare and weaponry had changed over the space of a short few hundred years. So this image is one that's very fascinating and it's one that I really kind of came across in recent years. So this one is taken from an illustrated eyewitness account of Richard II's um, campaign in Ireland by Jean Cretton. And this image was created in 1399 and it's a fascinating insight into both Irish warfare and how the British viewed Irish warfare at the time. So there's two really interesting things with this image. First off, obviously you can see the, the really big difference in how the Irish are dressed and both how the, how the British are dressed. So the obviously British head to toe in armor, also on larger horses, which I think is something that's quite interesting to note. You'll see the Irish are riding on horses much smaller and also no stirrups so you'll see that with uh, Art uh, McMurrah who was the um, gentleman who led the campaign against Richard II in Ireland you'll also see all of the Irish are carrying spears and interesting Art McMurrah is also barefoot something that I did mention earlier that you do tend to see throughout artwork 
also very interesting to note the way the forest is depicted behind the Irish in this picture. This dark, foreboding, almost impenetrable wall of um, forest. And that was very much how the accounts at the time depicted Irish forests. And it's often used to the Irish advantage in warfare, where they'd lead raids out of uh, forests or lead ambushes on the British as they try to advance through with their um, much heavier troops. And obviously knowing the terrain really gave the Irish an advantage in that aspect. So this, I think, is a really fascinating image and one that's um, not really as well known as perhaps some of the later images that we're going to look at. So next up we have a rather controversial image. Um, controversial for a number of reasons, but I won't get into those there because there's um, many, many debates on this. But this one is taken from Albert Dürer's um, drawings from 1521. Now, this is of a gallo glass accompanied by Irish currents. Now, if the artist had not seen um, gallo glass or currents, he's definitely um, had them very well described to him because there's certain details in here that are very much spot on. So the gallo glass seen on the left, you can see the very clear difference between them and the currents on the right. You can also still see the glib on the currents on the right, that hairstyle that I mentioned earlier, popularized by the Irish. And you can also see that the Irish are barefoot. Now, the main difference that you'll see here in this picture is obviously the arms and armor. Irish generally have uh, forms of pole arms and little to no armor, whereas you can see the gallo glass is got a thick uh, chainmail. The gentleman on the left has a large gambeson, also carrying a pike. And you can see the very famous uh, style of short bow that was very common amongst the Gallo glass and the Irish at the time. The picture itself is very fascinating in the details within it. And um, you can see that obviously the artist intended the bow to be a U bow. Obviously, uh, anyone who knows archery will see that the actual um, coloring his backwards, but props to whoever uh, painted it as it's a, a very um, unique little detail. And you also notice the uh, very, you know, quintessentially Irish style of pommel on the large two-handed sword that the Gala glass in the middle is using. This is the style of sword that becomes infamous across Ireland and one that is very unique to the island of Ireland, although it, I have seen um, versions from mainland Europe, it was very much the sword that was used here. You'll also notice that all of the people in this picture are barefoot or bare-legged I should say. Something that you do see in artwork very commonly and again that could come back to the sort of terrain that they were fighting in. Um, it's interesting that most of the gentlemen here are pictured wearing slippers perhaps so they can take them off uh, very easily should they need to. Um, Again, really interesting image, even if it's not as accurate as it should be, it is still a very interesting depiction of Irish warriors and their equipment. Now, I'm not going to obviously cover all sources of Irish within artwork as it would take far too long. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish with this final image and a few first-hand and second-hand accounts of the Irish at the time, but this is one of my favorite images of the late medieval slash early renaissance irish current and this image really shows what became the irish as they were known across europe there's so many things within this image that really are truly irish from the inner or the uh, colorful jackets that you see richly embroidered to the lena or the long flowing tunic with the large baggy sleeves to the ring hilted swords to the hairstyles, the bare legs. This image really shows you how the Irish looked and how they appeared and how they were known all across Europe. And this is very much what a Kern came to be known as. These were the warriors who were known across England and who were referred to in numerous accounts. Um, you can see the, the skin, the large and fighting knife with the gentleman on the right. Um, you can see the uh, button bonnet um, with the gentleman with the red uh, inner or jacket in the middle. 
so many interesting details on this picture and this is very much what the Kern came to be known as and it's very much what you will see if you uh, look up the images yourself. So this gentleman is Edmund Spencer. Um, now the reason I'm showing you him is because he was the colonial administrator to Ireland during the late, well, mid to late 1500s. And one thing that's very interesting with reading sources about any enemy during a war is that you'll often get, uh, for want of a better term, propaganda. You won't really get an accurate account of those people and often they'll be very biased in one way or another as are many many of the uh, accounts of the irish at the time yet i thought edmund spencer's um, references to the irish very interesting because he had fought against them and obviously as the administrator of ireland at the time had a pretty good understanding of what they were like so he goes on to hail them as great endurers of cold labor hunger and all hardness and very great scorners of death so it really goes to show you that even amongst the most stalwart of british administrators that they were very much admired for the warriors that they were and finally of course you can't talk about british literary sources without talking about the great man himself william shakespeare now Irish currents appear not once but twice in Shakespeare. The first is in Henry the Fourth, Part Two, where the Cardinal says, "My Lord of York, cry what your fortune is. The uncivil currents of Ireland are in arms, and tempered clay with blood of Englishmen. To Ireland will you lead lead a band of men collected choicely from each county sum, and try your hap against the Irishmen." And he also mentions them as well as gallow glasses in Macbeth, where he says, the merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, for to that the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him from the western isles of Kerns and gallow glasses is supplied. So as you can see, the Kern were very much within the British popular imagination. They're very much being spun as the enemy and the other, as is often done within warfare as a way to dehumanize and um, focus the public on the enemy. So just some interesting notes and really goes to show that the Irish and the Irish Kern were very well known across Europe at this time. Okay guys, so that was a bit of an introduction to the Irish Kern. Now, as I did say, the term rambling Kern is gonna involve me not just talking about them, but also rambling around Ireland. So. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to show you what a Kern was equipped with, how they dressed, how they fought, the uh, artworks that we have for them. And as I said, over the coming months and years, you're going to see me do various different things um, through the equipment and through the technology that they had of the day. So if that interests you, do stay tuned. Um, I will still be covering uh, Irish martial arts, spada and collar and elbow. There will still be a mainstay of this channel, as well as other aspects of Irish martial culture. And who knows, maybe other aspects of European martial culture, if that's something that people are interested in. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, big thanks to Tom, uh, aka Fandabi Dozy. His channel, um, do go check it out, it is a fantastic uh, watch. His channel mainly focuses on the Scottish Highlander. Um, which is a really fascinating part of Scottish history and also one that I think does get a, a good amount of representation. Obviously the film did help um, and that is something that I kind of want to do with um, the current and Irish martial culture. I think it's a very important uh, aspect of Irish history. And the term Cairn or you know, Cairn, Cairn and Cairn also um, influences Scottish culture as well, where the term Catherine is what is kind of used as the catch-all term for Scottish warriors. And I would also really like to thank Heiko of the Catherine Society for the amazing work that he and his team have done in promoting uh, this aspect of Scottish culture and Scottish martial culture, martial heritage. And they've done fantastic work on it and I really recommend checking out what they've done. And he's also really helped me with some of the research that I've done and obviously uh, with the martial aspect and uh, martial side of things as well. So big thank you to him and his team. Um, I will also leave a link for them below. 
So uh, thank you once again, Hago. Um, I do really appreciate everyone who's uh, watched and liked the videos and you know everyone who comments. I do make sure to, to reply to everybody. So if there is any uh, video requests or anything that you guys have, please let me know. Um, and please do share these around and, and subscribe. It really does help. Um, the more people who get involved, the more that it will allow me to um, do these projects and to continue with these um, videos. So if you have any questions, please do let me know. I know this is a um, big video and there's a lot in it. Um, there will be more parts to this over the next few weeks. I'm going to start to break down the equipment um, and also the kind of rationale for this project. So this video is giving a bit of an insight into it. Um, I do appreciate everyone for watching. Um, thanks again and slon.